Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. How's everybody doing out there? We are one day away from the weekend, and you are listening to the biggest show in the world, Sports Betters TV, sitting here talking to my boy, the Dream Kid. I love this track. I love the track. I love the energy. When I first heard that song, it came out right before we were on our way to do our Vegas thing, and uh, I just felt like it should have been, excuse me, um, the anthem for us because uh, it's just a, it's a nice track, low-key laid back, a lot of fun, uh, great energy in it, and hey, that's what we're all about. All day long, man. And you know what brings a smile to my face, dude? I mean, I put out the tweet right in the morning that says, retweet and listen now, sports betting live, right? And boom, I'll look at it in a blink of an eye. There's like 10, like in a second. Bang. Just like that, man. So, yo, big ups to all you guys that listen to us every single morning and help us out with that, dude. Like, the first minute, I mean, you guys rock. And we love you for it. So, thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate it, man. Definitely a big ups to the people who also listen, you know, when you get around to it, when you get a chance, we realize everybody has a busy day and a busy schedule. Uh, we do. We obviously we love the live listeners. Uh, it takes a little bit of, you know, um, dedication for you guys to get up at the same exact time every day. I know on the East Coast, it's nine o'clock, which is a little bit earlier for some. And on the West Coast, it is extremely early. Yet we still we got a lot of West Coast listeners. And uh, we want to thank everybody who listens to us and supports us as we appreciate appreciate all of your contributions yes definitely man and uh who, who do you got so far on the ticket on the ticket the we got well first of all we got rafael esparza coming on today guys if you guys are interested he's coming on to talk about probably a little bit of women's WNBA, and uh we will get into probably you know all kinds of stuff so it doesn't really matter you know because rafi comes in and he brings all the information that he has available uh with us um i got my man the Canadian capper up already this morning hitting me off. My boy Eric in Wisconsin. Shy picks us up. Uh, uh, and Kermit the Frog is hitting us off, off this morning. Nice, man. I got Buster Card Danger on here. Jay Cast is on here as well. Good morning, guys. What's up? And Doc as well, man. Uh, we talked about Doc coming on the show to talk a little bit about uh, some Patriots. Uh, Patriots and Peyton Ball stuff. You know what I mean? Uh huh. I do. So, uh, speaking of uh, segueing into that subject, man. So, uh, the I guess the NFL Players Association, dude, is um, they're gonna go to bat for Brady, man. They're gonna they're gonna try to take this. Uh, if the appeal doesn't work out, they're gonna try to take it to federal court, dude. I think it's a little ridiculous <laughs> now, man. Come on, come on. Sean, I, I think it's it, listen. Anytime, anytime our court system or uh, you know a taxpayer public paid system has to get involved with a private system. I mean, I, I mean, within reason for something like this, I think it's completely unnecessary, a complete waste of tax dollars. Um, I get what the NFL Player Association is doing. They kind of have their hand. You know, they're a union, bro. So they got their hands tied, you know, and that's what the union's about. They may not want to, you know, side with Brady. You know, it's like that defense attorney that has to, you know, that has to represent, you know, like a serial killer. Yeah. He doesn't want to, but he has to. And, and they don't, they may not want to, but they have to as, as far as being fair and impartial. If they're going to, if they're going to represent other people in other situations, then they have to represent Uncle Tom as well. So, so <laughs> unfortunately, my man Tom, he's going to get representation Um, personally. I think that I don't have an issue with the suspension. I don't have an issue with the suspension because for multiple reasons. And it's not because I don't like the Patriots. It's not about that because I happen to like Tom Brady. But I, I don't like Belichick and I don't like Kraft. And the reason I like the suspension is because I think it's a message to the New England Patriots. Look, knock it off. Just too much stuff has circled around the Patriots bending or playing with the rules. I know this is like, a, it, it, this is so insignificant and I get it because it's stupid because we all know the Patriots were going to kill the Colts regardless. They could have went out there playing with a wolf. <laughs> I, I agree, man. I mean, you it, there I was... mean they could have went out there with a Nerf football and beat the, beat the, beat the Colts. <laughs> all right. I, I, we know this, but it's about, these are the rules and you have to abide by them and you cannot tinker with them. And I think to get that message across, <clears throat> you have to draw a line in the sand and here would be a good spot to do that and not defer from that. So, and not to mention, 
the four games, you know, it ain't gonna even cost the, the, the four games. They isn't even gonna bother the Patriots. Well, you know what? I think uh, they're trying to get it down to like one game, dude. <laughs> one game. So hey, we'll see where it lands. I mean, hey. He's able to beat that, man, and, uh, you know, hey, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But they should send a message. I agree with that. But uh, Patriots also, some other news, man. They signed their kicker to a four-year deal, man, $17.2 million, brother. Their kicker is dope, and the Patriots seem dope. to always get a dope kicker, but their guy is really good. <clears throat> so uh, that's a good pickup for them and a good signing for them um, as, uh, you know, that dude is, is pretty money. Steven Goskowski. I always have him on my fantasy team. Well, I don't think I'm going to be doing uh, fantasy with you guys this year, brother. Yeah, yeah. You I think I'm, you I think I'm going to fall uh, back I from that. Adder said he don't think he's going to be talking <laughs> fantasy with And he's been thrown out of the league. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, I thrown out of our fantasy league like week eight of last season. The catch was irate with him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever, man. It is what it is. I got, I got big, you know. I got things to do, man. I got to do the biggest show in the world on Sunday mornings, man. I got to get my plays all set. I got to be. I'm gonna be in the process of uh, collecting my World Series payouts week to week to week as it goes. So you think I'm gonna have time for that? For those of you that don't know, Hatter and I are in, a, in the same league, fantasy league. We've done it for two years in a row. The same. One. I've been in it prior to that a bunch of years. Uh, it's with guys that I used to work with. Um, and then we, we brought Hatter on. His first year, he was fun. It was yeah, a, it was a good talk, time. About that, and then yep. after that, what you say? I said we've talked about that. Yeah, yeah. They ain't <laughs> feeling me no that, more. And for the new, I'm just saying for the people who maybe not haven't heard or, or new listeners, Hatter wanted to be a bum last year because his team really wasn't all that last year. So he, he kind of lost interest. You know how it, it, every fantasy league's the same way. If your teams don't right out of the gate the first three, three, four weeks, then the guy is sitting there all over it and, and, and doing his thing. If the team's dusty, you come up, you open up with like four losses, then the guy's like, he don't care about his team no more. I got bigger things to do. I'm gambling right now. Oh, I'm, I'm busy. I got, I got, I, I, I got home, home improvement work to be working on. I got time for that nonsense. Yeah, but if your team was dope, you was in there shouting out everybody. And, 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 well, I'm going to beat you this week in trash. <laughs> <laughs> we already know that, kid. We already know that. So uh, so speaking of uh, some other uh, NFL news, um, Des Bryant, kid. I think he's all set, man. Five years, $70 million, $45 million guaranteed, player. I love how everybody got their deals taken care of. I mean, the, the major guys anyway. Everybody got it taken care of yesterday. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh, this last minute. His, um, um, the Thomas from the Broncos got his. I like, yo, man, all you got, all the NFL, you know, owners and stuff all fronted up into this time. You know what? It's probably just to keep, the NFL's press machine. I will give them props on that. They keep themselves relevant all year round. Definitely. You know Definitely, what I'm saying? 100%. Whether it's the 100%. NFL trap, you know, I mean, I will, obviously the players give them some help by always getting arrested too. So that is always helps. is helpful. But, you know, they always keep themselves relevant. You know, having these two major guys, Des Bryant and, and, and Thomas, wait until the deadline to get signed. I mean, think about it for a minute. I know. You know what I know. I'm saying? Yeah, well, speaking of uh, Demarius Thomas, dude, five years, $70 million as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he's got guaranteed, though. I didn't read that. I just read, uh, you know, the deal here. This is, I mean, this is going to all get signed off, but you know, it's pretty much, uh, pretty much an I agreement. I would assume that Thomas is, uh, is, is. I would assume at least, at least seventy percent of his has got to be guaranteed. Uh, let's see. What's forty-five million and seventy? That's about sixty-five, seventy percent. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> You're probably I right. So that. I mean, based on how do you, I, I don't know. I hate putting you on the spot. Do you know his age at all? No, I don't. No, I don't. I have no don't. idea. I no idea. Up. But uh, we got to look at that. But I can tell you, dude, one guy that has not gotten a deal is JPP, Jason Pierre-Paul, man. They're trying well, to figure out what kind of player he's going to be with that, with, well, no with losing a finger. So no that's doubt. that sucks, man. Hey, dude, I'd be so depressed if that happened to me, man. I really would. You know, these guys got to, I mean, and, and that's got to that's got to take a toll on your psyche, man. When you start going to grab players and you, you're not as strong as you used to be. I mean, you know, they, they rely heavily on his presence. Dope. He's going to be, hey, listen, listen to me. First of all, here's the deal. They want to know what the doctors are saying about it. So they got to wait a little bit longer. Yep. The other thing is 
he's gonna be fine, dude. Dude, tr have you? Did you forget the NFL? I, I mean, have you forgotten some of the NFL player? Did you forget guys just running abandoned, wrecking <laughs> all defensive lines, running off through it? Trust me, my man is a big body. Yes, you do use your hands in football, but you use a whole bunch of other body parts to put some muscle on a player. Believe me when I tell you, he's gonna play some more football. Well, when you're, you know, when you're when you're using your hands as a defensive lineman, I play defensive end. I mean, you're you're a lot of your, you know, it's a lot of your strength. It's a lot of pushing out. It's a lot of chest muscles. You know what I'm saying? It's a, and it's a lot of, um, you know, windmill tactics and stuff like that. You know. Um, so, but it's just, it's not that I'm worried about. It's not him breaking through the line. It's when he grabs a hold of somebody that's a running back, like uh, give you like a Marshawn Lynch or something like that. That's a beast. You yep. know, he tries to grab the jersey, and Marshawn right. Lynch keeps going, and he can't. He he uh, he lost 25 percent of his grip. But that's son, what I'm here's talking my about. Thing. Here's here's my point. Marshawn Lynch, there's about. 50 other guys that got full capacity of their hands that Marshawn Lynch is running out of the grip off. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. So, so JPP is going to be fine because even without that finger, he's still going to be better than your second team. the top of his game one of the better players in the game it, there's a spot for him he's fine i mean i don't know if necessarily if it may be on the giants trust me some team will pick him up he's gonna get money because it's it's still he's still able to use a lot there's his education you know the, the ability to disrupt the offense it, it's all still there he's gonna still be effective even without that one finger okay all right. Well, hey, we'll see where it lands, dude. I mean, he's got a, he's got a lot of work to do, though. They're gonna really, you know, they're gonna be careful with this situation. So they're gonna be looking at it. But uh, I agree with you, man. I think he'll be all right. And I think don't uh, you see you know, the guys out there with casts on? Oh they yeah, no, I played with a broken hand. I know what it's all about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, he's trust me, my man is gonna still get good money. And like I said, he's still gonna be better than a whole lot of other guys that got full capacity of all their limbs that are playing. So I I, I don't have any any issues with him. Back to Demarius Thomas's age. He's 27, so the five-year contract puts him at 32. He's probably going to get all of that loot. He, at least he should. They'll probably redo it probably year, I would say, the middle of year, the end of year four. They, they may redo another one to lock him up, or he may go elsewhere. I mean, depending on, obviously, what happens with his career. He does have some issues as I don't really see Peyton Ball being a the quarterback there. For more than... I give Peyton Ball, depending on his success this season, I would say... Three years tops? I mean, tops. Nah, but yeah, it's, yeah, tops, max. But um, I think he's going to do this year, depending on the result of the season. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if they go 8-8 eight and eight this year, I think he's going to say, yo, I'm going I'm to a, I'm a rap with this. Well, that's what I'm saying. Um, I'm, you know what I mean? Well, I, you know, but if they if they are successful and they make it far, but even even – if he doesn't see your boy is a competitor, man. And even oh. if he, if he does not win the Super Bowl, it's like a letdown for him. You know what I'm saying? So oh, no. you know, oh. so I you know, it's tough. I think he has the same mentality whether he's eight and eight or he makes the playoffs. I think he's pissed off regardless if he don't win the Super Bowl. Oh no doubt he's he's ticked off whether he wins the Super Bowl or not. But um, you know, I, I, the thing with him is that you know last year for the first year as far as I'm concerned I know other people said they saw it before but last year was the first year <clears throat> that I drastically saw a bit of a fall off <clears throat> excuse me with a few of his throws as far as the velocity of the ball yeah. um, in certain certain in certain passes that he threw. You know, other people said they saw it before that. I didn't see it before that. No. But last year, I did notice it. So that, that, that will be the only thing that I would be cognizant of that I'm sure he's cognizant of because nobody watches film more than him. So he obviously watches the film on himself. And he obviously knows, you know, if he's throwing the ball in whatever direction, um, it's just not getting out there or it's not getting there as fast. So we got to just keep an eye on that. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, definitely. I mean, that, kid, how how – how do you explain the rush you get when you bet your boy and you see him coming up and down the field like with like, you know, seven yard outs and, you know, 10 yard passes and then a deep one and stuff like that when he gets going? Son, there's Dude, no, there's no better rush than that. I you, love, you know, I love him when he's out there coordinating. You know, he looks like a, 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 a orchestra conductor out there coordinating the offense, moving people around, to, m moving guys into the slot who shouldn't be on the slot. Nobody's going to hand the ball off. I mean, I love seeing him out there because it all means to me 
that this guy put in a whole lot of time. The offensive line has a whole lot of time. It, everybody wasn't out making rap videos. They wasn't at the mall. They wasn't at the strip club. You know what I'm saying? It's worth my money and, and worth my attention to watch. And I love that. And it, I try to sit my kids down, even though they hate it. They don't want to listen to me. I try to sit my kids down and be like, hey, hey, watch. Come on, real quick. I got little guys, so they ain't trying to pay attention to it. But I want to show them and watch this and watch this guy because... This guy's put in his time, and that's why I love. I, I do. That's what I love about him so much. There are other guys too that 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 are that are just as you know put in their time as well. But I love seeing him because every time you watch him, mo for the most part, it's just a testament to his dedication to the sport. You know what I'm saying? Oh, definitely, definitely, absolutely. And uh, speaking of your boy, uh, he got the uh, the best. Record-breaking performance at the ESPYS last night, man, with his 509 uh, touchdowns. No he, doubt. Uh, Speaking yeah. of your boy or girl. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I hear your I hear your boy was a stunner last. Oh, <laughs> I know. Are you talking about Bruce Jenner, aka K Caitlyn Jenner? My God. That's uh, ass, man. I see you have been trying to get him on this show. I'm like, he'll fall back. <laughs> We went from getting fat ass Kathy <laughs> to Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> the Courage Award, son, for Try Courage to player. To fall back for Caitlyn. You want to have Caitlyn on the show? Hey, I want to say good morning to Jim Rome's a douche. Richard <laughs> Kamek, Jay Snyder, Get a Vegas Bookie, C. Rodriguez Jr., Christos, uh, Mando or Orbagon, uh, Tanakis, Sirac King, Jay. Uh, Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Uh, Chris <laughs> Stos, uh, Tanakis, Sarah King J, Jason Bros, Doc, my man Buster Carr, J Cass, Benjamin Rowe, the Canadian Capper, Tip Talker, Irvin, Postal Pete, Snoopy Betts, Buddy the Dog, Sport Shark, Marlin, OJFB, Boston Boy, uh, Winkley, Rick Lopez, and Yado. Want to send a big shout out to my man Direct Sports Solution for coming on yesterday yes. and spending some time with us as we enjoyed that that uh, conversation as well. All day long. And uh, speaking of the uh, speaking of the ESPYS, um, Odell Beckham got the uh, the best play for the catch. Uh, best male athlete and best NBA player goes to Steph Curry, son. Best male athlete. Best Steph Curry? male athlete and best NBA player, kid. They should have gave him best light skinned brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I like that. <laughs> That'll be at the B the B E T awards. Yeah, right. <laughs> the B E T sports awards. <laughs> oh man, uh, let's see. Uh, best female tennis pl uh, player, obviously my girl Serena. No doubt, son. I, I oh, she's. Oh, unbelievable. I sent you a little something with her yesterday. Did I, you get that? I, I did not. I got to take a look at it, man. Oh, oh look. I, I DM'd you a little oh. something that I sent you uh, her yesterday. Dude, today. I would just that, – that would, I, would, I would need like – I, oh, I know. God. I, know. I, I need to like train for like two months and oh, <laughs> crush that. But anyway, uh, let's see. What, best, Speak for yourself, brother. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, whatever, man. Hey, it is Speak a – Speak for yourself. Yeah, you right. It's a, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best female. I'm good. The dream is good. We can get it popping right now. <laughs> you know what? I'd probably, I'd probably be so amped up, man. I'd be like, you know, let's let's run it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Best female athlete, uh, Ronda Rousey. I think Ronda Rousey's pretty hot too, man. What do you think? There, there's a little, there's a little sexy her. look. To I like her, her I, I, but I'm not. She don't really do it for me. But I'm okay with her. Son, she'll beat your ass. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, okay. Let's see. Don't, uh... get, don't get me into that conversation again. <laughs> but I ain't had a lot of ass whippings from girls. <laughs> and I ain't really trying to get. In fact, I ain't had none. And I ain't really trying to get in that line. <laughs> listen, <laughs> Rhonda might be bad. I, I, I Listen, I, I hate getting into this because last time we did, I got a bunch of tweets in, in Texas. All I'm saying is... <laughs> I, 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 I'm not trying to lose to no girl. Yeah, I got <laughs> and, you. Not personal, not being chauvinistic, but my pride would really be messed up. So if I got to cheat, you know what I'm saying? If I got to grab something and hit her across her head with it, I don't know what I have to do, but I ain't trying to lose. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, let's see. Uh, best. Uh, let's see. Best. Best champion perform. Best championship performance goes to my boy, even though he didn't win. Which I agree. I mean, you know, he was. He he was. Pretty much, I mean, besides I Steph Curry know. and all that, I, I you know, Sonny, he should have got it. 
Stop. He already got the MVP, man. So but uh, Iggy was the Iggy. Honestly, Iggy held that team down through the whole. Listen, if it wasn't for Iggy, I don't know that they would have the ch the title right now. I honestly don't. Oh, I agree Steph, with you. Steph Curry showed up some games and some games didn't. Yo, Iggy Dollar was was consistent through the whole playoffs. I mean, I, I I'm telling you, and I don't even really like Iggy Dollar's game, but I gotta tell you, that, that dude was money. All right, let's see what else happened at the ESPYs last night. I don't know if you guys watched it. I mean, I caught bits and pieces, but I was involved in watching, uh, since there was no sports on, I was watching those, uh, the investigation channel. I like those, dude. With, like, the murder, you know, the murderers and stuff like that and craziness. Did they but... want to investigate in your slum, slum housing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me get... The slum lord. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Let me get, let me get my boy, let me get my boy Rafael Esparza on the line here. Do we have Vegas on the line today? Yes, you do. What's up, buddy? How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you? Oh, we're Rafael good, man. We're good. Hey, Al, what's going on, man? How you doing today? Pretty good. How about yourself, Dream? Oh, I'm having a great time already. I'm already clowning this morning with oh, my boy. Yeah. So I, I'm happy to have you on <laughs> as we can get the show a little bit more professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Hey, Raphael, were you uh, were you doing an SB uh, odds last night? Uh, yes, I was. Of course you were. Guys, if you don't know who my man Raphael Esparza is, he caps everything. Whether it's the Oscars, the ESPYs, WWE, who's going to get killed off on the Simpsons, WNBA, MLB, Midget. NFL, NHL, uh, everything, dude. So, Midget bowling wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I catched my ticket last night with uh, Ronda Rousey as best fighter, plus 110 over Floyd Mayweather. So I was happy last night. Wow, oh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy, man. Uh, you know, just looking at a couple of other notables here. Best MLB player went to Mike Trout. Best golfer went to Spieth. Um, and best comeback athlete went to Gronk. Steve, uh, Gronkowski, man. So um, so what would you think of the ESPYs last Gronk night, dude? On, on the steroids. You know what? I, I didn't watch not one second of it because last night was huge uh, for us fight fans. UFC was on Fox Sports 1 yesterday. UFC uh, 71 in San Diego. So I was... Uh, Concentrating on, on that, and I was watching Gold Cup soccer. I figured I already I already made one play in the SP, so I don't need to watch it. Someone tweeted that that I won, so I'm like, all right, cool. I don't have to watch it anymore. So I was hooked up watching UFC fight night and uh, Gold Cup soccer. So I, I pop I, I DVR the SPs, and since there's nothing on today uh, besides uh, golf, once golf is over, I'll probably uh, watch the SP. I heard there were some pretty good speeches. Uh, throughout the whole show that I that I missed, so I'm actually kind of excited to see the speeches that I missed. So I'll probably Raphael, catch that. Up in the Raphael had her cash too on um, Caitlyn Jenner being a stunner. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, they had odds on what color dress you would wear, and uh, my wife told me to bet white at, at three to one, and I said I thought it was going to be black at two to one. Uh, red was the favorite, minus five dollars. So uh, whoever had white dress uh, cash last night at three to one. That is Rob, that's don't, don't, crazy. Don't try to don't don't try to don't try to pair Caitlyn Jenner with anything black. <laughs> you know, you know she's probably gonna date someone black as uh, all the card I can do. <laughs> don't try to, don't try to pair Caitlyn with anything black. <laughs> Oh, my God. Rafael Esparza. Dude, I have a lot of questions for you regarding Las Vegas. But um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the um, – since there's no MLBs going on, uh, what are you doing right now? How's your uh, WNBAs? Because I know last year you were incredible at it. So what, what are you doing uh, right now with it? It's, it's almost exactly how it was last year. Started off, win one, lose one, win two, lose two. So I'm breaking even right now. But last year, right after the All-Star break is when uh, the team can – condolences on this. I was just freaking red hot during after the All-Star break second half and playoffs. It's oh, almost oh. dead on to the numbers from last year. So I'm hoping I'm going to have a huge second half like last year then. My man was off the charts. I uh, I definitely talked about it. I, I still am talking about it. Uh, we, we were in Costa Rica and you actually – all, saved, kind of saved the trip, or you, you, you helped the fun part of the trip with that contribution with the WNBA. So yeah, you, your WNBA has already been talked about, um, and you were definitely on the money last year. Oh, I love. There's been a lot of, there's been a lot of big surprises in the WNBA. Who'd have thought Tulsa would have a 500 record? They're 10 and four. They're covering machine, 10-3 and one in their last 14 games. 
Uh, who would have thought that? I didn't think they would. Uh, I thought they'd be improved, but then then Skylar Diggins went out off for the year. I thought they would uh, uh, kind of dwindle away back to the or the way Tulsa usually plays, and then they reeled off some uh, big wins. So they're a big surprise. Of course, you have Minnesota that's ten and three, but they've been struggling to cover games. Connecticut is a surprising team. They're seven and five, but they're again covering machines nine and three against the spread. So I think it's this. This WNBA season is very surprising, at least in my eyes, who, who follows it, because there's some teams that I thought would be better than their record, but can't cover spreads worth of crap. So it's 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 fun to watch. It's it's, it's nerve breaking when you have uh, money tied up on women's sports. But I had a great women's World Cup, so I guess if I'm losing, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm blowing my money that I that I won on women's World Cup. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, speaking of the women's uh, USA team, they uh, closed out the show last night, winning the uh, the best team overall. So, uh, you know and, and, yep, go ahead. Yeah, I was a, I'm, I'm a huge soccer fan, and watching the, that tournament alone, granted, yeah, I, I was rooting for USA because I, I, I knew they were a better team, but wow, their defense throughout the whole tournament was just spectacular. I thought the tournament overall was outstanding. I talked to you, all the books in Vegas, they said that the handle was, uh, was a bit surprising, uh, bigger than the last uh, World Cup. I just think the excitement was here, and I'm happy. You know me. I'm, I'm a big women's sports watcher with WNBA, with soccer, all that stuff. So I have to tip my hat off. That tournament was outstanding. The view, I mean, just look at the viewing ship on the last game when USA played. It was better than NBA playoffs, almost better than uh, a Super Bowl ratings. And it outdid the Rose Bowl. It didn't beat the BCS, but the ratings were just huge. So I was I was pleased for, for women's sports that, that whole uh, tournament. Wow. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Hey, speaking of WNBA, um, Skylar Diggins got the uh, the best WNBA uh, award last night, uh, best WNBA player uh, for the Tulsa Shock. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, yes and no. I think they were probably replaying, reviewing that from last year. You figure last year, Deladon didn't play almost the whole season. Candace Parker didn't play last year. If they had to do it right now, I thought no, but maybe the sympathy card because she's out for the year. She was she was the best player before she got hurt in the league uh, as of right now. But yes, because I think Deladon, is, she's like she's almost like watching like LeBron James in playoffs. She has no one around her, and you know, she's just ranking up stats. And I think that's strong negative to her. But as of the first the game that she was playing before she got hurt, yes, I agree. She was the best of NBA player. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, uh, Dream, what kind of questions do you have for our guest today? Man, he's all over the place, so I, I, I don't really have any specific questions. Uh, just, you know, a couple of thoughts on, you know, who who is the powerhouse in the WNBA right now? And who do you feel, um, what, 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 what do you think, I guess maybe give us two, give us four, four teams you think that will, uh, you know, end up, you know, big? I mean, Minnesota is is by far, I think, the all around best team. Just they just stack. Their 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 uh, starting five is just outstanding. They play well together. They're my favorites to win it all. They're still my favorites. I thought they were going to win it all. But there's teams that have stars coming back. You figure the uh, Candace Parker's coming back from L.A. Granted, they're only two and ten, but you don't need to win that many games to make the playoffs in the WNBA. So they can make a late run. Phoenix is going to be up there now that they have uh, their girl back from suspension. Still no Tarasi for the whole season, but uh, I think they're starting to play well without her. I know the, the WNBA TV ratings and all that. They want Chicago and Minnesota in the WNBA Finals. Deladon versus the starting five in Minnesota. I think that'd be good for ratings. Uh, but watch out for this Indiana Fever. They score a lot of points. Uh, granted, their defense gives up some, but if they can uh, high track them from Chicago, they can maybe sneak in in the East. But I, as of right now, I think the WNBA Finals will be Minnesota versus Chicago. All right. Okay. And there's, there's probably uh, props on that for those two teams to meet in the finals. So it might be something to take a look at. I don't know what the odds are, but, hey, you never know. You know what I'm saying? And – I noticed that a lot of these games are during the day. I've seen some, like, start early. I'm, I'm seeing, like, plays come across my board that are, like, you know, 12 in the afternoon, 11 o'clock. What's up with that? They, they do that? It's, it's the summertime, and if you watch these games, you see a lot of camps there, a lot of, like, maybe Girl Scout camps or cheerleading camps, and, and they get free tickets. So I understand that they're, they're early just to try to get a little bit more attendance. Because uh, school's out right now. Girls are out. They want something to do. Uh, take them to a, a, a WNBA game at 12 o'clock uh, at noon or 1 o'clock. Uh, if your girl's at a camp right now, they'll, they'll take the whole camp. So I like what they're doing. 
Uh, they're trying that maybe not to compete with uh, with baseball and uh, and stuff like that. I like the early games uh, for a betting reason, just because a I have something to watch, and b I understand that they're doing it all for attendance uh, and attendance only. So you figure it's the summer, people are at home. Uh, if, if you're a, if you're a parent, that maybe uh, you have to watch your kids and all that. Hey, let's go to a free WNBA game where the tickets are usually really dirt cheap. It's something to do in the hot hot uh, summer days of uh, summer. Sure. Sure, definitely. Well, there's no hot, hot summer days here on the East Coast in Connecticut. Yeah, right. As all, only thing hot here is paying taxes. As always, we've had one of the lousy summers that I can ever remember right now. Oh, I know, dude. I got my try to put the heat on this morning coming into the uh, office. No doubt, it was like a fall. It was like a fall more. I mean, this to, honestly to be in July in even in Connecticut where we do usually get a little bit of heat, um, June, July, and August. It's been like it's been non-existent this this year. Dusty, and, and I love that they say there's global warming going on, and I, and I want to punch that that scientist in the face, or at least bring him here to live with me, because I can't figure out how there's global warming going on, and it's the coldest it's ever been in Connecticut. Yeah, right. right. So I guess they don't blame El Nino for weather in Connecticut. Then I no, guess it's just no, all over the. No, I guess no. it's all over the world except uh, Connecticut. All over the world except Connecticut. Because we paying taxes for the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Raphael, I have some questions for you regarding Las Vegas. If you could uh, be so kind to answer them. Fire away. All right. So let me ask you a question. I mean, I went on your show last year during the MLB season. and I was fortunate enough to cash with the San Francisco Giants. Now, in Vegas... Are the I, I noticed that online, obviously, that the every day the futures are posted with all the respective books. Uh, they usually come out, I'd say, around noon. You know, one o'clock. Some are slow. Some come out, at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning, and others come out at like one o'clock in the afternoon. Now, do I, I don't even know how how many sports books are out in Vegas? First of all, oh. Uh, you figure every casino has one. Uh, I would say over in in Nevada alone. I know it's over a hundred. You probably over a hundred closer around that. Okay, over a hundred. So do all, do you know? Do a good majority of them post future odds every single day? We don't. Call, I mean, odds are odds are open all the way until we only usually uh, we'll keep them open until like the last two games. I mean, we start minusing teams out once they have no more shots of making the World Series. Yeah, but they're open. They're open in almost every casino right now. You can go in there and place uh, twenty dollars on uh, on the Baltimore Orioles or whatever team you want to bet on. Yeah, they're open right now. We don't shit like it's once a week. It's right now. It's usually Monday, Tuesday. At least it was for it was the book that I worked in. Monday, Tuesday, we'll go in there and look at okay, look at that during the week. Move some numbers, unless of course you have some guy that comes and hey, give me ten thousand on the Yankees to win the World Series. Then you you would move the number right then. But right, you don't get that big of action on World Series. You get a hundred dollar bet here, a twenty dollar bet here, a fifty dollar bet. Unless someone's putting down a thousand or more, then you might move the number that at that bet time. But usually once a week or twice a week, you'll go in there and see what people are betting. If you need to move uh, a number, a point. Or let's five to one, to four to one, or whatever. You move it right then. So do they? So they don't. So they put. You're saying they post like Monday, Tuesday, or do they post every day? Oh, every day it's open. Every day you can bet the uh, 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 World Series. They may close the pennant, like NLAL. I know some books will close it during the All Star break, or maybe a couple weeks after the All Star break. But they'll leave the World Series open all the way until the last two teams are in it. Okay. All right. And um, so they post them every single day now. How would somebody, you know, that lived in Vegas be able to see all these respective odds for the casinos? Do they have to actually physically go to the casinos? Do they have apps now online? How does that work? Some of them, like the people who do have phone accounts, uh, like at William Hill uh, stations, you can see them on your phone. Uh, MGM is uh, rolling out their new phone and their new systems. I, I think in August, so you'll be able to see MGMs uh, pretty soon out of August. You can see it on their apps, like if you have a phone account, which you have to have a phone account with them. You can't just, there's no downloadable app for for you there that's living in Connecticut to see what MGM has. Uh, they, they don't uh, like to show their odds. Sure. A gaming control board won't let us show uh, odds unless you pay for a service or whatever. But, yeah, if you have phone accounts, if that casino has a phone account, then you can see it uh, through a, through an app or through your PC. 
Okay, and how many would you say? I mean, it, so this is probably a new thing, I would imagine, as far as the phone app. So they pro- So right now, currently, you probably have to go to most of the casinos to see what their odds are. Or can you can you call them up and, right. and say? They call it out. First of all, they won't they won't direct you through the sportsbook. It's against the law to call a, a Vegas sportsbook unless you uh, unless you're an employee or media. Uh, but if you call the app or you say, "Hey, can I talk to?" Uh, Lamar Mitchell over at MGM, who's the racing sportsbook director, uh, they'll be like, sorry, we can't uh, transfer a phone call to uh, the racing sportsbook. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. All right. So that, that sounds like a lot of work for somebody that shops lines. Uh, yeah. So I mean, back in the, you have to remember back in the old days, you'd be walking uh, from one end of the strip with future sheets to another. So it's getting easier. Like I said, I know, I know Cantor has an app. I mean, there's a lot of people who have apps now. I think now that MGM's going on, you figure Harris. I don't know if I, I, I think Harris is pretty close too. So pretty soon, I would say in the next year, everyone's going to have an app because they're going to have phone accounts. So you won't have to do a uh, walking. You can just click your phone account app and, and look at it through your phone or PC. All right, perfect. And the way the odds makers work, guys, and uh, you know, Raphael and myself have talked about this several times, is that basically the the odds for futures are set up where the books can't get hurt. I mean, if you do it right, you're saying, you know, like one yes. book, let's say the MGM Grand has, um, you know, all the odds or whatever, and they, they start pulling in money on the Yankees. So what they do is they bring those odds down and move some of the other teams up. So this way it balances all the money, correct? That is correct. All right, cool. So I, I tell people every year, it, and the only time the biggest books will get crushed on the World Series is that the Chicago Cubs ever win? Because every year the Chicago Cubs have the most tickets written, and it doesn't matter if they're they're, they're projected to be in last place uh, in the in the NL Central and in the National League. I guarantee you, by uh, they'll have the most tickets written uh, to win the World Series. They have the most tickets written right now. I've talked to uh, numerous round of books because every time I go to a book, they're always say, "Hey, Rocky, do you have a Cubs?" Because everyone knows I'm a big Cubs fan. Do you have a Cubs World Series ticket? I'm like, no. I don't have a Cup World Series ticket because if it's going to happen, I don't want to cash and cry at the counter. I'd rather just cry in my room or cry at the stadium because they won. I'm not going to go to a ticket counter to go cash my ticket while I'm crying. Yeah. So uh, uh, it, it's funny how people are like, oh, uh, the, the Angels win. I bet you Vegas gets crushed because L.A. No, the only time Vegas will get demolished in the World Series if the Cubs ever win that uh, win the World Series. Okay, because you know I'm an avid um Line, oh, yeah. line oh I know you. You have probably right, right now. I can guarantee your listeners you have over twenty tickets uh, for the World Series. More. I have more. I, I invest. I said, every, I I said invest over. Every. I said the over. <laughs> You're Which right. Which is ass and nine because only one can win. Son, it's not. No, 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 no. Because I have several ticket. I have several tickets per which, team. Which, which I'll add. Uh, you know what, uh, Katie? You know, <laughs> I'm about to put but you in the good, haters category. All good. Dream. Let Adder do what he wants. All good. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, we'll see. Well, you know what? You're gonna get I so know. sick of my pictures that I send you with all the nah, payouts. Nah, I know. I know. <laughs> but um, I yeah. So I mean. I, you know, and I appreciate you answering my questions, Raphael, because, um, you know, I mean, like right online right now, I can go and, and get 10 different odds, like by 12 o'clock, one o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So I want to mm-hmm. make my life easier that if I was ever out there for an MLB season, you know, I can get I could shop a bunch more books like right I, from my room. You know I, what I mean? I can almost guarantee by next year. Now that MGM is releasing their new system, they're going to have a phone app. You're going to see. Uh, I, I, I can't. I can't think if Harris has one coming or if they already do have one. But MGM is the biggest, uh, pretty much the biggest casinos out there. They own pretty much half the strip of the sports books. You figure now that they're going to have uh, an app and all that. But if you didn't have one, uh, a casino, other ones are going to uh, fly upon. Like I know Cantor does already. William Hill does. Uh, Westgate does so. It, I would say by next year, you don't need to walk the strip for futures anymore. Just to open up an account, look at your phone, and sit, sit in your room and, and chill off because it's 114 degrees outside. Awesome. And they would make you. Uh, would they make you deposit money at the book, or would they, you just you just go in and give them your information? Oh, if, if you live in Vegas, you don't. Just, uh, locals don't need to go to casinos anymore. Everyone has a phone account, a phone app. You can invest through your phone. Uh, it's like I said, it's it's really. It's really fun to do. I, I'm still old school. I, like I said, I have so many friends that still work in the book, close friends, best friends, people that I would 
uh, do anything that to help him out there in need. So I think it kind of hurt, uh, hurts my, my friends and job. You now no one's going to the books. But like I say, it, it, going to the casinos for a local, if you live in Vegas, to make a sports bet, it's, it, it's not existing anymore. You can just stay at home and, and make your bets. All right, cool deal. Dream, sorry I'm uh, taking all the questions here. No, that's all right, man. I know how you are. You like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm I'm very very inquisitive about this. I know. You know know me. I answer uh, answer as many questions as possible. I don't hide. It's all good, Rafael. Hatter's the type of guy that puts puts 50,000 on the black and then 50,000 on the red. (laughs) <laughs> Shut up! You're such an idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, if, if he that, walked away that, from that, the table, if he walked away from the table a dollar ahead, my hat's off to him. Well, I'll give 50, you an I'll give you an example, dude. Fifty thousand on the black and forty nine thousand and fifty on the red. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I'll give you an example, dude. The Cubs, the Cubs right now are um, the best you could find on one book is like twenty to one, and then on another book, I got it at forty to one on the same day. So it's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if you if you do it correctly, you you will win a lot of money. So, you know, yeah, that's what I'm trying I agree. to I'm trying to get the uh, I'm trying to. Yeah, because, you know, I take advantage of, uh, you know, the difference between lines like Texas Rangers are uh, 40 to one on one book and 200 to one on another. So, you know what, Dream, if you do it properly, you know what? By next year, I guarantee you guys this uh, the entire SBTV nation. The dream will be on the Hatter system next year. I, I will not. He will. I can't wait for the Dodgers to win the World <laughs> Series this year. And I'm the hat. Look at me going. Oh my God! What happened? No, I will. I'll be involved with the with the nasty Dodgers. Don't worry. Don't. It doesn't it's not gonna matter who wins, player. At the end of the day. So um. All good. All yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Raphael. But anyway, let's get back to basketball a little bit um are you noticing and i know you probably aren't at this point as you said that you know things have have been up and down um going into the all-star break um but as far as the totals are concerned because i know we hammered a lot of totals last year are you noticing overs more unders more defense is better our offense is better what 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 are we looking at this year with the WNBA? This year, I'm noticing a lot of Eastern Conference teams been, uh, uh, scoring a lot more, which is mostly Western Conference teams. Like well, the last couple of years, Phoenix has just been a scoring machine with Tarasi, uh, uh controlling the ball and, and passing and just scoring at will. This year, so like I said, it seems like a lot of East, uh, Eastern Conference teams. I mentioned Connecticut. I mentioned Indiana. Uh, the pure almost averaging 80 points a game, averaging 79. Chicago, 85 points per game. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at more at Eastern Conference teams scoring a little more. Granted, those Eastern Conference teams' defenses are giving up tons of points. Uh, Chicago giving up 81 points a game. So uh, right now I'm looking at Eastern Conference teams going over. I'm still not sold on uh, Phoenix, uh, their offense yet. I, I still think they're missing that team leader, Tarasi, not playing Granted, they're still averaging 77 points a game, but last year they were close to 80. And I think the odds makers are still making their totals a little bit high. So there's no value for me betting Phoenix doing games over. I've gotten burned a couple times already, thinking the number was soft. Uh, so I bet the over. And it wasn't even close. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I guess I'm drinking scotch early tonight. So I- I'm looking at more Eastern Conference teams going over uh, than normal. And, it- and it so far it's been ha- helping and cashing me some tickets. Cool. That's awesome. That's all. It's kind of yeah. It's similar in the NBA too. You know where you have the oh, uh, yeah. the, we- the Western. Uh, you know it's always you know you're seeing the totals at like you know over 200, and then in the Eastern you know it's it's 190s, one you know high 180s and stuff like that. So yeah, it seems like it's. Uh, what, I mean, what's what's the reason for that? Uh, I just think the Eastern Conference team, knowing that that, that the West is, has, has lately been stacked. I mean, Minnesota for well, four years, almost five years, they've been just. A stellar team. LA's always been good. Phoenix has always been good. I think Connecticut had just figured out, hey, if we're going to beat or uh, outplay the Western Conference, we need to outscore them. We need a, a faster tempo, and I think that's what the that's what's been working. Watching Connecticut play this year, it, to me, I, I've seen a huge difference in watching them play in the past, where they were kind of stall ball, running their plays, running their systems, and, and trying to outclass their opponents this year. They're, uh, they're up and, and they're trying to make a fast tempo game and I think that's the reason why they're uh, I don't want to say they're a huge surprising team 7-5 to five, but uh, they're, they're playing much better than I thought so and the same thing with uh, Indiana and like I said Chicago I think Chicago knows that they have the best player in, in the league so let's make it fast and tempo and Belladon loves to run uh, she runs pretty good for her size so I think that's why they run a fast tempo game so I just think they realize that hey 
the Western Conference teams have always been stacked the last five years, like I said, with Minnesota, L.A., Phoenix. Let's try to outdo them, outrun them, and maybe uh, maybe we can sneak in a championship. All right, cool deal. Cool deal. What do you think, Dream? You going to start getting involved with little uh, WNBAs or what? I definitely will if I can get my man to hit me off with a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of DMs with, hey, Dream, you need to jump on this. <laughs> I, I always forget to DM people on, and all that. It's just like, it just seems like lately I've been doing a lot of writing and stuff. And so I, I'm writing and typing. And like, shoot, I forgot to text my – I mean, I'm, 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 I'm fixing to text my twin brother who – Who's always thanks a lot for uh, giving me your UFC plays yesterday? I'm like, damn it, I was writing. Sorry. So if I didn't text my twin brother who wants some action, uh, I, I'm sorry. He's first, but uh, if I forget him, that's why I'm forgetting a lot of other people. Gotcha, gotcha. It's all hey, good. Rob, I wanted to ask you. Speaking of UFC, uh, what's your thoughts on my man, uh, my man McGregor? What's your thoughts about this guy? You know what? I've I've been talking to a lot of big big MMA uh, writers. Uh, PR people from UFC and stuff like that, and, and we all agree that they're rolling the dice with McGregor. They want him to be the face of UFC. No disrespect to Ronda Rousey. She's right now the face, well-deserved, uh, brilliant in the ring. No one can touch her, but UFC needs that male face like back in the old days when you had the Chuck Liddell's, the Ortiz, the Brock Lesnar's, and, and, and this Colin McGregor he talks smack, but he owns it. I mean, he was talking smack in the ring when he, when he was fighting. Granted, he was losing. I thought he was losing that fight. I, when he when he knocked him out or tapped him out, I thought he was he was down on the card. I sh- I'm shocked at how well he still uh, was able to pull that victory out, knowing that he was losing. He even said, "I knew I was losing a point." I think he's going to be the next face of uh, UFC. I think they're going to. He's now going to be in the next. Uh, the reality of uh, whatever ultimate fighter he's going to be on their neck. I think they're rolling the dice, and I think it's a good person. I think he has the, the charisma on TV, the charisma during interviews. He has a huge following. I mean, I used to go to MGM fights when Ricky Hatton was fighting, and I used to tell people those Irish fans were not, they were not, they were bigger than the Mexican fans during uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend. And then the, the crowd that he brought in for this fight. Was just uh, it was tripled worse than Rich Hatton. They sing, yeah, they no. sing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's 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 he's he, he's the real deal, and, and I'm and I'm happy for UFC because, like I say, if he could continue winning, uh, you're going to see UFC maybe step up uh, again, like maybe, maybe back in the old days. Yeah, I agree with you about especially about that Ricky Hatton thing. Um, th- Ricky Hatton's fans came they used to have that drum and they would bang that yep. drum and scream and get drunk like the whole fight it was it was I, it was I, it was quite something and they are fully behind this McGregor guy and I yeah you know what I'm I'm happy too you know I I I, I like this guy you know I I like his personality I like his spunk he's cocky you know he's arrogant energetic um I like it I, I think it's great for the sport you know I, I'm I tend to like individuals like this most of the time. I mean, there's a couple individuals like this throughout the sports world that I didn't appreciate. But uh, one thing in boxing, when it when it's you against your other opponent and you're not part of a team, you can you can have this kind of attitude. I feel and still be success and 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 be successful as long as you can back up. You know what you're talking about. And this guy so far, like you said, he's been the real deal. And uh, I, I I'm really impressed by him so far. And uh. You know, hats off to him and what he's doing. It's the same thing with boxing. I, I've been telling people, Triple G, who spoke no English when he came to the States to, to live here to start boxing. And he, uh, he, is, he must be the smartest person or he has the smartest camp around him because they're teaching him English. And now that he lives in California, they're teaching him Spanish. So now when he, I mean, right now, between him and Canelo, uh, we'll probably be the next probably face a boxing when Mayweather re- retires. Uh, Triple G, if he can learn English and speak Spanish to get the, the Mexican crowd since he's living in California now, talk about a huge marketing he will have yeah. to get the Mexican fans and the American fans and, and then, of course, all his fans where he, from the Ukraine. It's, it's unbelievable. Whoever's, whoever's managing him is nothing but brilliant teaching this guy, hey, Teach him English. He's living in Let's teach him Spanish too. Let's get that crowd. Nothing but brilliant there, right there. Oh, absolutely. That's a that's a def- to be bilingual is huge, especially oh, for marketing. Yeah. 
I agree. And you can't touch him because you're Triple G right now, probably the best fighter. Uh, then I, I, I believe best fighter right now. I'm better than Boy Mayweather. I, uh, Mayweather likes to run, but uh, Triple G likes to uh, hit, hit the body. And when you're a runner, when you're a runner, body punches usually would stop you. And uh, Triple G hit Mayweather in the, in the gut or in the ribs. He's gonna feel it. Oh, definitely, man. Cool deal. So I have one more. But that's but. just it. You got to hit Mayweather in the gut and the ribs. And how many punches to the face will you take in the process of trying to do that? So eh, I don't know if I'm going to. I'm not willing to give Triple G the crown yet. <laughs> oh, I, either am I. You can, in order to beat the champ, in order to be a champion, you have to beat the champ. And granted, right. I'm not the biggest boy Mayweather fan, but he's the champ. So hats off. He's the best. Uh, let, let's get that fight going, but that, that fight would never happen. I heard he's fighting Andre Ward. Probably going to be on TV at TV, uh, Mayweather's next fight. Got you. Got you. Dream, you have any more questions? I have a question for him. No, I'm, I'm pretty good with questions, but, I, you know, Ralph, I do think, I won't say that the Triple G Mayweather fight is not going to happen. Is We all know that most of the great boxers always tend to hang around too long I, and it's I, you know it's not about the money i know mayweather talks about money and he's a smart guy and I, I get all that but what it ultimately i always believe is is it's the roar of the crowd and everybody shouting your name and you being relevant and a couple of you give him a few months and, and his triple g guy comes along and you know his name's not being talked about that much anymore and you know nobody's talking about him all the greats always hang around too long. So uh, I, won't, I, I won't go out on the limb and say that that won't happen. I agree. And if that fight does happen, I know Mayweather has one fight. I can guarantee you I've been into meetings before MGM announced that they were going to build uh, a new arena, which they are right next to Aria, my old stopping grinds between New York, New York and Aria, that new arena they're building right now. You're trying to tell me Mayweather will not fight in that new arena. I'm hearing that he's going to open up that arena. Uh, Danny, like Danny White already said UFC 200 is going to be in that re- arena. So I would not be sure. Everyone says, oh, Floyd Mayweather has one fight. He does have one more fight left on his Showtime contract. I still think he fights two more times before he hangs it up. He fights, like I said, like I'm hearing Andre Ward, DBS, Free TV will be his uh, his last fight with Showtime. But I, can, I would be totally shocked if he doesn't fight at MCF New Arena in Las Vegas to open it up. Uh, and, and I would love to see him fight against Triple G because if that's a fight, I figure Triple G would fight twice before that arena opened, and I'm hearing he's going to fight uh, Cotto, and then if he wins Cotto's fight, he'll probably fight Canelo. So if he beats those two, uh, Cotto and Canelo, and then maybe opens up the MCF New Arena with Floyd Mayweather, wow. Yeah, Definitely. Definitely. That's a, hey, I'd watch all those fight streams. I'd like to see him do Cotto Canelo and then take on Pacquiao, which Pacquiao will be really wrapped up by then. And then here comes Floyd, and maybe that would bring some great life to boxing. Uh, and oh, but he would have to beat Floyd, and then we'd have b- boxing back again. But uh, all that's a bunch of future talk. That'd be great to see happen as i really want boxing to come back um and i hope it can make a comeback as they're trying to you know change some things around in the sport and make it better um hey we're at that time yeah definitely uh just one quick question for you rafael um (laughs) and this is uh something that you and i talk about quite a bit but uh wwe has a pay-per-view you uh you on anything sunday (laughs) <laughs> oh, you know I am. Come on, you know I am. <laughs> Figured I, I get a little junkie plays involved here. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually writing my blog today as we speak, and, and I, I know uh, the WWE universe, which follow me a lot. A lot, uh, a lot of WWE wrestlers follow me because they they read my stuff. It's funny how they're starting to see all my stuff that I read. I'm taking Seth Rollins plus 120 over Brock Lesnar. I don't see Brock Lesnar winning the belt back at a pay-per-view called Battleground. If this was SummerSlam or WrestleMania, yes, I, I think something happened. I think someone interferes. Seth Rollins wins this fight. Plus 120, I'll take that. Uh, I still just don't think they're going to hand Brock Lesnar the belt. I'm not calling call it Battleground a horrible pay-per-view, but who would... It's not the Summer Slams. It's not WrestleMania. So I still think he, I think Lesnar would get his belt back during a big, big, huge pay per view. It's not going to be Battleground. All right. Well, I read something about um, Triple H actually fighting Rollins at SummerSlam. So 
That you know may- what? I'm hearing so much. I'm actually going to some. I'm actually going to WrestleMania the, uh, next year at Dallas, Texas. I, I, I got a free pass. Uh, all the writing I've been doing, like I said, a lot of people are very interested and love what I've been doing with wrestling uh, for fun. I just did it for PR because you don't think wrestling people don't watch football or NCAA. I did it for more of an attendance reason more than, than anything else. But, I, hey, I got a free ticket now to go watch WrestleMania. I'm hearing Brock and Rock is the main event at WrestleMania. That that would that would be huge numbers. If you have Brock Lesnar versus The Rock, that would be probably the biggest biggest draw ever. Yeah, so yeah. I'm hoping it does because I'll be there. All right, cool deal, man. So, guys, we are talking with Rafael Esparza from Doc Sports. A uh, lot of great information, man. You're always a stellar guest. We appreciate it. I don't think we've had you on since Vegas, dude. No, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I reached out to him, and I'll be in him talked about it, and definitely that's why I was happy that I could get him scheduled and get him booked this week. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming on, brother. Oh, anytime, you guys, I listen to you guys. Not live, because sometimes I'm still sleeping when you guys are live, because uh, granted, I've been up on 24 hours watching golf. I haven't slept yet, so it was perfect timing, but I'm always listening to you guys when I'm flying or driving when I need something uh, to listen to, because I'm not the biggest music person. My wife says I'm the least person that knows anything about music, so I'm always listening to something sports and all that, so... I always download your stuff and listen to it. Listen to it. All right, awesome, bro. Well, we appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you got anybody you want to plug or anything before we close out? No, if you want to, if you want to check out all my writings and all that, you can go to docsports.com or I click on there my ugly face, Raphael Spurs, and all my past four recent articles are on there. You can read that. All my packages are on there. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun time over at Doc Sports, and like I said. Uh, Follow me on Twitter at BSA Doc Sports. You can see all the crazy stuff that I write about on betting. All right, cool deal, Raphael. Thank you so much for calling. Uh, thank you for answering all my questions too. I appreciate oh, that. Anytime you have a question, you have my number. DM me. I'll answer all your questions. And the minute the, all those sports books go on the mobile, your boy is going to be out there. <laughs> Trust yeah. me. So I'll be uh, I'll be looking you up, and we'll have a conversation, have a drink, or whatever. Anytime, anytime. All right, man. Take care. Have a good one. Take it easy. All right, bye, guys. Take it easy, brother. So, Dream, we're uh, we're at the time already. Kid, stellar show, huh? Awesome show. Raphael's always a great guest. Very the consummate professional at all times. Um, Like I said, guys, he's my go-to guy. You know, whenever we have any questions about Las Vegas or any type of wagering questions, is he's been in the industry for a long time. He's the guy that we turn to, you know, to ask some of our, you know, personal questions as far as things that we don't maybe are on the edge about not knowing or uh You know, any information I want to know. Also, like I said in the past, his WNBA has been stellar. Um, He's given me quite a few WNBA winners. I don't know a whole lot about the WNBA. uh, And I know we preach about not blindly following. And I don't usually blindly follow. Um, And even when he gives me stuff, I don't still like... You know, still take a little bit of a look, but he's been very good with his WNBA. He's been very successful, and that is not telling anyone to go and blindly follow him or do what he says. <laughs> that is saying that I have and I've been successful with it. And if you go check him out and do your homework and you like him and you talk back and forth with him and you're comfortable with him, then you do what you want to do with, with him. I am not telling anybody to go that way. So. Before we get into that little bit of the nonsense, the, the kid, the kid picks just told me to give up MLB. He said I'm sharp as attack with WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Son, I don't lose with the WWE. Put it that way. And my my, hey, pack, my I, package listen, is available. You, my fraud package it, is available. I, I ain't gonna not. One thing I will say <laughs> is if you if you watch wrestling. At a high level, and I know you do because of your kid. Yep. But Kid Picks is also, by the way, don't don't let Kid Picks fool you. I, he watches about as much wrestling as football. <laughs> 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 he's sitting there. And, he's sitting there with his Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny, guys? Funny story. So I mean, we go to the you know the local Buffalo Wild Wings and stuff like that. And um, the WWE actually put out a. Um, They put out their own network now, so the bars can't show the fights anymore. The day they did that, the waitresses at Hooters and Wild Wings and stuff like that, they all celebrated. Because what would happen is, during the pay-per-views for the WWE, all of the guys would go in there with the title belts on and the face paint and the t-shirts and stuff like that. Son, they would would sit there from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock drinking a soda 
and a buck, you know, a bucket of wings. That's it. So they, these girls made absolutely no money with these guys, dude. So they so they quit quit your job then. <laughs> they made no money with the wrestling fans coming in. So the day they they so, uh, so now they couldn't no show one up. comes in. No, nah, everybody goes in for football and uh, the boxing yeah, and, the, and the UFC. I'm saying though, on, on the, when the when the WWE events are on, they're not on during that time. So they're, they're, even though they're making no money, they're still making more money than they're making when it's not on. No. Yeah, but if you if you're going in as a as a female, make it fifty bucks for eight hours. It kind of sucks, you know. Bro, listen, look. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here, Here we, we go. go. It's like the people screaming about, I can't get a job. I can't get a job. And everywhere I ride around, I see help wanted signs. Oh, I don't want to work there. Okay, well, then you don't want to work, honey. <laughs> all right? There is not a job where you can get your nails done all day, all right, and look cute all day. Work Tuesday to Thursday from, like, 11 <laughs> o'clock to 3 o'clock and make $190,000 a year, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Most of it's cash. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, bro. So, uh, <laughs> hey, guys, you know Wake what? Up, go marry a rich guy like everybody else does. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Get the sugar daddy popping. Yeah, definitely. Or, or exotic dance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exotic oh, dance. I love that title. Oh, man. Exotic dancers. I, ex- I'm an exotic a, a, per- dancer. a, a performer. I'm a performer. Oh, oh exotic performer. Oh, we're going to get killed over that. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> All right, guys. Dream, what you got to do? An amazing show today. What you got to and, and do? Uh, just for you, baseball returns tomorrow, brother. Oh, just when it was getting so dope. I was so comfortable having such a good time. And I got to tell you, I haven't missed baseball one bit. <laughs> I haven't missed baseball one bit. This week has been one of the most fun weeks I've had since uh, what the last week of the NBA. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the back to baseball, player. Fantastic. The chemistry's been great. The jokes have been here and there. Um, just all kinds of. In- Listen, guys. We welcome baseball back as well. I mean, it is a sporting event, and we are into sports here. We are going to be hopefully better uh, uh, right now going into the tail end. But even if we're not, we do have football right on the horizon for us at the very end of August to get us back in gear. So we're going to tough out these next three weeks and then get ready to get it going with the football season. I want to thank everybody that's been retweeting the show and listening today. I got my man randomly on predictable 808 dixon yamahata welcome to the party show brother as i haven't seen you before uh sports super sports lots shy picks is out there direct sports solution once again thank you for coming on yesterday Kyle man swag always one of the faithful listeners love talking to you and seeing you out there with the retweet brother thank you so much and uh, uh hopefully your boy tom brady will get his four game suspension you'll be okay i'm sure kmvu is out there jc's out there james harrelson we love seeing you out there brother how are you this morning system pick 63 is out there joseph del rosario jim rome is a douche richard comic welcome to the party brother as i haven't seen you before uh so big Big ups to you and thank you for listening. Jay Snyder's out there. Get a Vegas bookie. C. Rodriguez Jr. My man Christos. Mandu Abrigan. He are a new 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 tag as well. So good morning to you and welcome to the party. Tanakis, Sirat King J, Jason. And bras, my man Doc Buster Car, J Cass, Benjamin Rowe, the Canadian Capper, T- Talker, uh, Irvin, Postal Pete, Snoopy Betts, Buddy the Dog, Sports Shark Marlin, OJ FB, Boston Boy Winkley, and Rick Lopez. Guys, tomorrow, I haven't got it nailed down completely, but I'm pretty sure that Cousin Pete from the Fake Fam is going to be on with us tomorrow. Oh, wow. Uh, we, got a, we have a soccer tournament going on now. C-O-N-C-A-C-A-F Gold Cup is happening. Uh, I talked to Cousin Pete yesterday. He told me he's going to come on tomorrow. Come on tomorrow. Uh, but his schedule is a little bit uh, is a little bit busy. He's going to try his best to make it on. So hopefully I get him nailed down today, and hopefully he's going to be on. But I'm trying desperately to get him on tomorrow. And as well, you know, tomorrow is Freaky Friday, so we will be all over it. Freaky Friday is going to be off the hook tomorrow, especially if he comes on to judge, man. To help us no out. No doubt, he's not really coming on to judge or coming on to give us some information about the tournament. Uh, I, I I didn't tell him anything about the judging thing, so 
Um, I mean, we can we can add that as an additive once he gets on. I just want to get him on and get him booked and get him on here to talk to us about a little bit of soccer as there is a tournament going on. And I like to be relative with most of the sports that are happening. Guys, you also know there's a golf event going on. Uh, we've been talking about it a little bit. You know, I threw a couple of coins on Spate. So uh, I don't know what you guys are doing with that. But there's been some talk back and forth on Twitter. Uh, I may try to reach out to somebody who does, who does golf. Uh, I have been trying all week to do that, but I haven't gotten really any bites back. But uh, your boy's always on the job at all times, trying to get relative relative uh, guys in to talk about whatever they need to talk about. So uh, I, I I will continue to do so. One more thing. On Saturday, Rob Dog is coming on to talk with Hatter and um, Dr. Dr. Dan. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Rob Dog will be on on Saturday, talk a little bit of college football. Um, that's got to be a three-hour show because Dr. Dan will take up at least two hours of his own <laughs> stuff, and Rob Dog will be able to maybe get 15 to 20 minutes in about his. So you guys stay tuned. De- definitely get on, tom- on tomorrow and on Saturday as we should have some more real informative guests on to help you. As always, remember who you were. I am the dream, and make the most of each and every day as you cannot get this time back. Yeah, we'll probably put him on at the uh, at the end of the MLB breakdown. Because a lot of the MLB yep. games start early, Dream. So, you know, we want to get make sure that we get all that info in so people can get their plays in. Because uh, Dr. Dan would you been... like him to call? Because I can set up, if you want, I'll just set him up with a, with a later call in. Yeah, we'll have the conversation. You, you okay. know, I, you, Let's talk after the show. Okay. But, uh, guys, we are Sports Betters TV, the biggest show in the world, having an absolute blast seven days a week. We are on all the social media outlets you can find. Just look up Sports Betters TV and the hashtag SBTV Nation. We love you to death go out there go easy do your own homework bet your own plays and get that money take care